Kenjaku's not going to take over Yuta's body, or Takaba's for that matter. This is a pretty popular theory after the last few chapters, and it doesn't seem that likely. There's also some people saying he might take over Gojo's body, which also doesn't make sense in my eyes. Of course, it's Jujutsu Kaisen, and things change all the time, so I could be wrong in the end. But I'm going to explain why Kenjaku's not going to be taking over anyone's body, and why he's actually dead for good. So first off, let's start with the fact that he actually is dead. Let's take a look at these panels from 243. The way Kenjaku talks here implies that he actually is dead. Like, we don't see him die, these are just his last words. But still, why would he say things like this if he weren't actually dying? He said he hates to leave so much undone. Why would he say that if he's going to be alive? A lot of people focus on this part where he says my will shall be carried on, but again, that doesn't mean that he's going to personally be the one doing this. The way he states everything here makes it sound like, yeah, he actually is dead, and someone else is going to have to finish the work for him. But for the sake of this video, let's say he's alive. He's not taking over Gojo's body because he's so far away from him, and honestly, if Gojo is actually dead, either his body's already been taken by his allies to try and do something about it, or it's been completely obliterated, especially after the Kashimo fight. That only really leaves Takaba, who also might be dead here, and Yuta. So let's say he is alive and would want to take over one of those targets. First off, Kenjaku having stitches on his head implies that he actually has to remove the person's scalp and brain, and attach himself to them that way. One of the vows he has is that he can't remove the scars on his head. And the fact that he's able to even remove his brain willingly, like he showed with Gato's body, that implies he can't just switch bodies, he actually has to empty their skull first and remove his brain somehow. Granted, I don't know how that would work, maybe someone else has to help him with it, but his body swap doesn't seem to be some Captain Ginyu type thing where he could just willingly go into someone else's body and that happens that way. It seems more like a procedure that just allows his brain to commandeer them. And if that is the case, he's just a head right now. He doesn't have arms that he could do anything with. So I guess the only other way he could do this is if he can manipulate gravity somehow, use a cursed spirit to help him, or if his brain grows some like venom tendrils or something like that, which actually might happen considering the fact that his brain has teeth and all. But still, it seems pretty far-fetched that he'd be able to do this without an actual body to help him. But maybe his brain actually is a head crab type thing. Okay, so let's say it works like that, and his brain could actually just move like a head crab and he could attach himself to people's faces and devour them. If that's the case, Yuta's not stupid. Kenny is just a head right now, and Yuta already blitzed him when he was actually whole. Not only would a Yuta be fast enough and strong enough to stop this, but he's also not just going to sit there and let this happen if that's the case somehow. And Yuta's whole purpose of being here is to kill Kenjaku. He said he wanted to do it before, and everyone else isn't trusting him to do so. It's pretty likely that immediately after the scene, Yuta just finishes the job. But let's say for some weird reason, Yuta doesn't end up killing him here, and just for some reason leaves the head there despite the fact that it's still talking and moving. Who would win in a fight? Headcrab Kenjaku, or one of the strongest sorcerers to exist at the moment, who already did defeat Kenjaku when he was whole. For all of this to happen, we'd have to assume that first of all, Kenjaku's still alive. Then, second of all, he has some way to swap right now. And third of all, he's able to somehow get the jump on Yuta, and he wasn't just killed after the fact. You'd have to have a lot of conveniences here for him to actually take over Yuta's body, or Takaba's for that matter. For Takaba, it's one thing because he is just laying there, presumably dead, but Yuta is still there and would prevent this from happening. Personally, I think Kenjaku taking over Yuta's body or Takaba's body would not only just be a bad idea in general, but it's also just objectively bad writing because there would have to be so many conveniences for it to happen and you have to make Yuta essentially stupid here. And I know people like to have agendas in Jujutsu Kaisen and slander people, but put that aside for a second, Yuta isn't stupid. Yuta would literally just have to stand there and let that happen, assuming Kenjaku even has the ability to do that at the moment. And even if his body swap does work like a Ginyu type thing, it's still going to be tough to do so. So for those reasons, I don't think Yuta's going to be taken over by Kenjaku. And on top of that, Kenjaku's dead here. He's not coming back. At least not in the sense that we're actually going to have Kenjaku fighting. He definitely has some sort of plan set up, especially considering the fact that he's the type of person to have plans for something like this. He'd want a plan B. And he directly mentions that a lot of his stuff is undone and his will is going to be carried on. So all this implies he's done right now. But still, there is a chance that I'm going to come back in a few weeks and say this was completely wrong. Although at this point, I kind of doubt it, given how much stuff happened that supports what I'm saying here. I guess we'll see soon enough, but for now, I'm going to say this won't happen. Let me know what you think below, though. Do you agree, disagree, or think something else? Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.